shortly. Uh, but but again, I, I read yesterday that uh, you didn't even have lights, although you guys have the Akosomo Dam that supplies us power. You don't have lights. What's the situation like right now? Do you have power? Yes, what you read is accurate. Um, the ECG had to disconnect large parts of the constituency because the uh, substations were underwater, totally submerged. And their fear was that there would be mass electrocution if they didn't take urgent action. And I commend them for that, uh, that preemptive and precautionary action. Uh, so I can confirm to you that large parts of the constituency remain cut from uh, electricity uh, supply. And uh, we are not worried about that because it's better to live in darkness than to be electrocuted. So we understand uh, what the ECG has done in that uh, regard. At least uh, uh, they have acted faster than the VRA. So we, 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 we value their intervention. The Ghana Water Company has also cut water. So we also don't have water. And what the Ghana Water has explained is that their substations have been submerged, and uh, they also don't have electricity. Remember, they need electricity to, to, to pump the water. So once electricity is cut, um, they would also not be able to supply water. They also want to assess the integrity levels of the uh, water systems, whether uh, the contaminated water has, uh, has, uh, has, has, has uh, uh, gone to con contaminate their own uh, water reservoir. So, again, that is uh, a precautionary measure which we appreciate. So, uh, what we are doing now is to bring in tankers. We are also receiving a lot of donations. Yesterday, Voltic was with us, and I want to commend them. Uh, they are offering us 7,000 bags of sachet water, and uh, that will go a long way uh, to uh, help my people survive. Uh, whilst the Ghana Water Company Limited assesses the integrity of their water systems and whether they can begin to restore water to us. So, mm. uh, yes, you are right. Uh, no electricity, no water in many, many parts of my constituency. And you can just imagine this is this is a nightmare. And that is why we have been appealing for the declaration of a state of emergency because all the tenets, all the qualities, all the characteristics of an emergency situation is rife, is so apparent, is so palpable. As ranking member on the Foreign Affairs Committee, I can confirm to you that when I have reached out to our international partners, all of them have said that we will really appreciate it if your government will announce a, a state of emergency. If they declare a state of emergency, then it triggers our governments back home to rush in with support, with humanitarian assistance. And I, I really do not understand why the government is not doing that. Look, even within the UN system, when I reached out to the UN country rep, that was the response that, yes, uh, we are looking at how we can help you, but really if your government can declare a state of emergency, it will immediately, because that's the protocol we work with, it will immediately trigger our emergency response mechanism, and then we can move in with the much-needed assistance. So, I mean, for uh, a country which is struggling economically, which is under an IMF bailout, and uh, you have all of these uh, areas in the system, we know everybody is owed. We know you owe contractors. You owe school feeding caterers. You owe pensioner bondholders. You, you are doing debt restructuring. You are asking people to take financial haircuts. So we know the state of this economy. So... Uh, not that we want to put pressure on the government in terms of our needs, even though um, uh, it is their responsibility, and even though we also acknowledge that when we were approving the 2023 budget, we approved a line item for contingency, as we do every year, about $600 million. And one wonders where those contingency funds are, because it is for emergencies like this. That is why you approve a contingency. It's not for National Cathedral, as they were doing the last time, and we had to stop them from abusing the contingency fund. So, Samuel, so, so keep pushing, so, so keep pushing, am, keep pushing. I am, I am uh, uh, concerned that this declaration of a state of emergency is delaying, uh, because looking at the state of this economy, it will really have been helpful 
uh, with that declaration, uh, you will see our bilateral and multilateral partners uh, rush in and they will have offered us the needed assistance that uh, we need. Tammy, all I say is continue pushing, continue pushing. Government would, would you know, declare the state of emergency and all that. But again, I spoke to the Queen Mother of uh, Mepet not long ago. I'm so sure she's on the line. My concern is under